okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise is what I do. Yeah. Praise is what I do.
Stand in honor God's word. Is that all right? Amen. In the Old Testament, when Ezra read the law, they stood all day long Amen. while he read. So when you when you stand one or two or three minutes to honor God's word, think about that you have to stand all day long. Amen. Amen. So Matthew chapter 17. I think both of these are up here. Kind of small, but hopefully you can see those. Amen. And if you haven't, say amen. amen. And we can read those together in Jesus' name. Matthew 17, 2 to 4. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Let's drop down to Luke chapter 9. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9 today. One verse there. And it says, you have it, say amen. amen. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Father, we thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for the words you've given us today. Bless us and keep us by your grace divine. Though it is a rainy day, God, the sun is shining down in my soul. And we just give you praise. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 You've seen the presence of the Lord in the house of God today. Amen. And I really, really don't plan on being before you long today. Amen. I'm really sorry. Thank you. We do honor all our guests and friends with us today. Amen. Yeah. Everybody's turn around and say, glad to see you. Somebody's going to say, glad to see you. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just welcome each and every one of you here in the house of God. But on this morning, I want to talk to you out of the book of Matthew, the book of Luke, about how God, praise the Lord, uses Matthew and Luke. Amen. To speak to our hearts about transformation. Amen. Amen. You might say, Pastor, why is transformation important? Transformation is important because anytime you grow, you change. Yes. Amen. Anytime, praise God, God wants to take you to a new place. A lot of times he's asking you to take on new things and to release some things. Yes. Amen. Amen. During this time of COVID-19, the Lord, praise God, amen, has Forced the church into a new a new realm of media, amen. amen. It is forced to, it is forced society into a new place. Praise God, amen. And now God, I believe, is wanting to speak a word to the hearts of the people of God today about the transforming power of taking us to a high place. In the book of Matthew, chapter seventeen, praise God. After they have prayed and after they have seen some of the miracles, God takes Peter, James, and John to a high place, amen. As He takes them to the high place, praise God. Amen. And, and in Luke's message, they begin to start praying and begin to start, amen, and then they fall asleep, praise God. But Matthew, amen, and uh, uh, Mark, though, said nothing about their praying or their falling asleep. They just go to a high place. The Bible says that, uh, that, 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 that the Lord, amen, is not here. I think it's in my next slide here. Praise God. Matthew chapter 17 is that he bringeth them to a high place in the mountain apart. Church of the living God. The first point I want to make to you, praise God, is that God wants to take you to a higher place. Amen. God wants to take you somewhere you cannot get comfortable where you are. You should not settle where you are in God. Amen. You should, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 5, he says, He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I pray this morning that God gives you an appetite to want more of him. Amen. Praise God. And, but the most important thing, praise God, are you willing to go? Amen. See, what happens is that God wants to take you, but are you willing to go? See, God wants to show you something, but are you willing to, to wait on the Lord for the revelation of God? God wants to, praise the Lord, call you to a greater place in him. Amen. But are you willing, amen, to let some things go because you can't take everything into God's presence? Amen. Everything that you have accumulated and everything, praise God, that you have experienced, amen, praise God, you can't take with you. The Lord, praise God, hallelujah, is, I don't know if you can see that, praise the Lord, but in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, praise God, let us lay aside what? 
Every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. I got that highlighted in red. And the reason why that's highlighted in red is because, praise the Lord, the Lord is asking you, if you're willing to go, then you're willing to let some things go. If you're willing, to, if you if you want to go to a higher place, there's some things, praise God, that you cannot take with you. Amen. There are some mindsets that cannot go with you. Amen. There are some behaviors that you cannot take with you. There are some attitudes, come on somebody, that you cannot take with you. Because God, hallelujah, is trying to make you into somebody in him. Praise God. The Bible says in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being, praise God. So everything that's in you, praise God, you can't, it can't be in him. Because in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. The enemy, he told the devil, hallelujah, he has found nothing in me, praise God. So the things that are not like God that's in us because we are born in sin and shaping in iniquity, it's not your fault, praise God. Hallelujah. But you have to deal with it. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. There's things in us, praise God, is because of what mama did and because of what daddy did. Amen. amen. Praise God because of what uncle and aunt did and what co-worker did. Praise God. But it, it is your responsibility wow. when you look into the word of God to get rid of it. Amen. Come on, somebody clap your hands, shout hallelujah right there. Amen. amen. Because praise God too many times, amen, you think God's just going to do something for you when God's waiting for you to do something for yourself. Hallelujah. God's waiting for you, praise God, to do something, praise the Lord. Amen. You say, Lord, I want to go to a higher place. Lord, I want to do this, but I'm carrying all this luggage and all this baggage, praise God. But God said, you got to let that stuff go. Because I got to take you to a place where I'm going to give you, praise God, something new to hold on to, praise God. Too many times, praise God, we want to bring all this stuff to God. And God said, you don't need all that stuff, praise the Lord. Because I want to meet every one of your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus, I want to let you know, praise God, all the stuff that you think you need, you don't need. Amen. What you have found out in these last six months, that everything that you thought you needed, you really didn't need. Right. Some of the stuff, praise God, that you were holding on to, you thought was important, really was not important. Amen. Praise God, God knows how to streamline your understanding, amen, to understand that all we need is Him, praise God. He gave us, amen, the, hallelujah, the I am the God. He said, I am the bread of life. Amen. I am the living bread. I, I am the I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the one that supp will supply. Amen. Praise God. And God is trying to help the church understand that our hope is still built on nothing less than his blood and his righteousness. Uh, we can't trust the sweetest word. I don't care how good it sounds. Uh, I don't care what it smells like and what it tastes like. We can't still hold on to nothing but the word of God. Hallelujah. But are you willing to go? Amen. Church, we got to go somewhere today. I'm asking you today, praise God, right now in your mind, praise God, to let go of whatever you think that, that you think is important, amen. As a matter of fact, let go of everything that you think is important and see yourself grab a hold of God on this morning like never before. Amen. Amen. We used to sing a song, Hold On and Don't Let Go. Yeah. It, it, it is high time, church. For us to hold on to God. And we have to know, are we willing to go where God is going to take us? Amen. Stop backing up. Stop giving God excuses. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Well, Lord, this is the way I always am. This is the way it's going to be. Guess what? That is nothing but a lie. Amen. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are what? Yes. Passed away. Behold, all things are what? Yes. Become new. How do anybody want to be new in God today? Look, no matter how many times he, he has already renewed your sanctified prescription, subscription, he's ready to renew it again. Yes, because Jesus already paid it. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. But are you willing to go? Now, I want you to think about some of the things that, that you offer God as an excuse this morning. Yes. And say, guess what? God is letting you know that's not good enough. Whatever you have told the God and whatever you have spoken to Jesus Christ about, amen, about why you can't, about why you don't see your way, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Every time you say, Lord, I'm not going to, you better ask yourself, Lord, are you going to give me my next breath? Lord, are you holding that aneurysm down in my head? Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, praise God. Have you kept the enemy off my track? Yes. 
when the car should have came across 95 across the median and hit you? Praise God. God let you go on down the road. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We don't know how God keeps us. Right. But one thing I know about God. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. <laughs> Who's buying to stay on me? Come on, somebody clap your hands, shout hallelujah. Church, are you willing? Are you willing to go? Somebody say, I'm willing to go, Pastor. I'm willing to go to the high place, Lord. Whatever you got for me, praise God. God says, amen, that, that when he says that, and the Bible says that he was what? Transfigured before him. He had changed into who he really was. See, people think that God changed into something that he was not. All he did was took back the veil of the glory he had shrouded in the flesh, praise God. The Bible says the veil, that is to say, his flesh hid his glory. Amen. He was, amen, the only begotten of the Father, full grace and full truth. John chapter 1 lets us know that. But God, when he gets to the Mount of Transfiguration, he took three brothers that were willing to go. Praise God. They didn't have to go, but he brought them because God was ready to show them something new. And you just wave your hand and say, Lord, hallelujah, I want to see something new. Somebody ever say, Lord, I want to see something new in my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In order for me to see something new, God got to show me something new. Praise God. You have no original thought. All the things that you thought and experienced came from some place. And I need God to get in my mind like never before. And though some things that I got into my mind through my life, I'm thinking, praise God, the wrong way. Praise God. I'm thinking incorrectly. Amen. Because the, inc the enemy, praise God, when the, the Bible says, when God, when the man went out the soul, the sea full of seed, the enemy came and so tears in the midst of the field. Praise God. Some of us by, by our situation and by our circumstances have had tear sown into our life by the enemy and we're living in the tear situation instead of living in the weak situation. What you talking about, preacher? You keep thinking the wrong way. You keep praying God thinking it's your fault. Hallelujah. You keep thinking, praying God, playing the enemy. Hallelujah. To the situation. Hallelujah. That you went through. Woe is me. But praise God. You got to understand. Hallelujah. He made you the head and not the tail. He made you the linger and not the bar. And then praise God. Hallelujah. He said, I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I am a book of your people. I am chosen and a generation. And I will so far the praise of him that has brought me out of darkness into this father's life. You got to know there got to be a change in your life. And God is the change agent. You cannot change yourself. Have you ever seen a have you ever seen a car change his own change change his own tire? When the tire goes flat, somebody else got to change the tire. Let the battery go bad. The car the car may send you a message saying the battery's not working, but it ain't gonna go down to the auto store and buy a hundred and fifty dollar battery. Come on, somebody, and put it in itself. Somebody got to put the battery Amen. in the car. Amen. So God has to change my heart. Yes. I cannot change my own heart. God has to change my heart. But he cannot change hearts that don't want to be changed. Yes. You got to want to change in your life. Yes. You got to want to see something different. You got to stop going around and mom, you say, around the same old mulberry bush that you've been going around for the last 10 years and find you a new mulberry bush. And that's what God's trying to do. He, they were transformed. He was transformed but before them. Jesus wants to transfigure our transform through engagement. How did it, of what you think of yourself through him. He's trying to transform and do amen worship and praise so that you think differently about you. Because if you want to change your situation, change you. Amen. Stop trying to change the people around you. Amen. Change you. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to fast more. I'm going to lift my hands more. Praise God. It's time out, church, to stop pointing fingers and start looking at the man that's in that mirror and say, guess what? You need to change and you need to do something about your situation. And God is calling you and he's giving you direction in the word of God that though, hallelujah, you can't change yourself, but by my experience with God, through worshiping and praising God, through having an in close relationship with God. God will change how I see myself. Yeah. Yeah. Let me talk to everybody who's low-pressed, depressed, suppressed, got low self-esteem.
see. You know what? That's not God. I bind the devil of low self esteem right now. Jesus. Amen. Ain't nothing but the trick of the devil. You are what God says you are. Hallelujah. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm going to find my identity in the word of God. What does God say about me? You know what he says about me? I've been blood bought and I've been blood washed. How many anybody hasn't been blood bought? Let me see if you've been blood bought. Anybody have been blood washed by the blood of Jesus? Anybody have been down in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. That means you've been blood bought and you've been blood washed. So the blood, hallelujah, testified of who I am before God. What does it testify of me? It says, though my righteousness is as filthy rags, he gave me a a new mode of righteousness, huh? that I can walk and walk upright, huh? though I know what I am on the inside, huh? God will change me from the outside in and from the inside out into the Son of God, he said, beloved, beloved, right now, we are the sons of God, God, sons of God, the God, of God, the God, the God, the God, the God, the Son of God, the 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 Paul, praise God, experiences. He has an engagement with God on the road to Damascus. What the engagement does, it tells Paul who he really is. It tells Paul, he tells Paul is a chosen vessel unto me. Paul didn't know that. Paul didn't know that he was chosen by God until he had an experience of God. Let me tell you something, church. You don't know who you really are until you have a true, honest relationship and a true, honest experience with the God that you serve. Uh, hallelujah. You got to stop talking at God and start talking to God. You got to stop praising at God and start praising of God. You got to stop worshiping towards God and worshiping of God. There's different when somebody talks to me and somebody talks at me. Too many people are talking at God Amen. and not talking to God. Amen. That's the change that needs to take place in your life. Because when I talk at somebody, I'm usually going to say something that's going to belittle them. I'm usually going to say something, praise God, that they're not give them the full credit. But when I talk to them, I am open to what they have to say back to me. See, two of them of us are talking, but we're not listening for the response of God. Hallelujah. And through engagement, Paul was changed. Was that
You feel the spirit of God begin to move in here. And guess what? You don't do. You resist the power of God. You're telling God what you're going to do. God, praise the Lord, amen, challenges you, amen, when someone would give you, you give, or give $20, give $10, amen, praise God, and you say, you know what, I ain't got $10, you go right now and pay $11.99 at the local fast food restaurant, amen, come on somebody, you didn't need them 2,000 calories anyway, it's time out, church, to realize that your behavior might be telling God what you're going to do. The praise can just up here and say, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. And you say, ah, oh. you telling God what to do. Because they're operating in delegated authority of the power of the man of God, of the word of God, over that house. Yeah. Church, too many times you are self-consciously telling God what you're going to do. And as long as you tell God what you're going to do, he can't tell you what he needs you to do. Stop telling him what you're going to do. And want him to co-sign off what you're doing. God ain't nothing, ain't nothing co about God. Let me say it. Ain't nothing co-sign, co-pilot, co-signature, nothing about God. Hallelujah. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. You want him to co-sign off on all your stuff. Let me tell you what. God ain't in the business of co-signing on nothing. Moses shows up and says, Lord, I can't speak. He said, okay, there's Aaron. I got a studying problem. Okay, I'm going to give you Aaron. Praise God. What am I supposed to say to him? Tell him I am that I am sent you. What does I am mean? He found out because he was willing to go. And he was willing to open his mouth and say, what well, does say it, the Lord? Amen. Think about the things that you told God that you're not going to do. Amen. Church of the living God, I tell you, you got to be willing to go. See, some of, some of us, I feel, I feel tightness in here right now. Because God is trying to open you up to try to show you something new. I said, I feel it in here, praise God. How can that preacher tell me I'm resisting God? Hallelujah. Let me tell you how you resist God. You resist God, praise God, when he tells you to go left and you go right. Watch this. A no response is a response. Praise him. Say, lift your hands. You resisting God. Amen. I said, really? Yes. Amen. Yes. You need to see it like that. See, see, you don't understand that your perception of your, of your own situation has got you all messed up. Your perception is, is that you think that whatever you say go. It is not whatever you say go. It's what God says. Amen. If you were able to humble yourself, let me talk about all y'all proud people today. I'm talking about folks today. Because somebody didn't talk about you to you about you. Amen. Because you're missing the blessings of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all so proud, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. That you hide it in a cloak, praise God, of shyness. Uh-oh. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Okay. I don't ever want God to say, I don't know if I can save them. Come on. I don't want God to ever testify before his father. I don't know. At this situation, I'm going to cover them with your blood. I don't ever want to give God a chance to say, I don't know about you. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help you get out of your brokenness and get into a wholeness situation. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, but it happens in, in your engagement with God. He says, enter into his gates with that He tells us how to engage him. And enter into his courts with praise. praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Let me tell you something. You can't bless him with your lips stuck together. Blessing means you got to make some noise. Yes. You got to say something. You got to wave something. You got to move something. Yes. Praise God. You may not run and jump and dance like somebody else, but you got to open your mouth and open your spirit and do something. Yes. Yes, sir. Praise him. Praise so that's for all y'all quiet folks in the church. Glory. I ain't got to sit here and be quiet. God's going to be all right with me. Guess what? He said, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Yeah. And shout to God with the voice of triumph. Know what he says? Yeah. 
And that's what God, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Know not that he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. See, that's where you're stuck at. You think everything you got, you've done yourself. You ain't done nothing. Amen. You know what you've done? You got up. Every, if you, when you got up this morning, it was God. Amen. When you put your clothes on this morning, it was the Lord. When you put your key in the ignition and the car started, it was the Lord. Somebody need to hear me today. Pray God. When you went to the store, amen, and swiped your MasterCard and got your honey, uh, honey, honey Cheerios, amen, and your gallon of milk, it was the Lord. Praise God. I said praise him. Amen. Pray God. When you decided when you're going to wear red or blue or pink today, it was the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Even when you decided to do something wrong, God allowed you to do it. Because he could have cut you off in your mess. But anybody glad God didn't cut you off in your mess? Uh, he gave you a chance to get back. He gave you a chance to get it right. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that, that he gave me another chance. So I say, God, I'm glad you gave me another chance. Come on, tap your hands and give God some praise. It's still engaging him. Y'all still ready to go? Somebody say, I'm still willing to go. Y'all sure y'all still willing to go? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you not scared when God shows you you? Come on now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is what I'm pumping to the door. I ain't just preaching. I'm preaching to me too. Help us, Lord. Because I got to change how I see about myself. I got to, I can say I'm a royal priesthood all day, but if I don't see that in myself, guess what? It ain't never going to happen. The Bible says walk humbly before our God. I cannot allow my ego or my thought process negate the word of God. Someone said the word of God is too high to get over, too low to get over. Too wide to get around. He said, you must come in at the door. Hallelujah. Paul has changed. Time out. Stop telling God what you want to do. Amen. It's time out. And it's time in to start asking God what you have me to do. Amen. Now, let me share something with this. Your flesh is constantly in rebellion. Your flesh. You got to stop walking by how you feel. Too many people walk by, well, I, ain't, I don't feel like going to church today. Ding, red flag. Red flag, red flag. I don't feel like it. Oh, you don't feel like it. Okay, maybe God will just make you feel like letting your heart be another beat. Come on now. Maybe God won't feel like protecting you no more. Maybe, maybe he'll ask an angel, say, hold up, give, hold him back. He's still in charge of all the angels. He's still... Oh, in charge of all my protection. I ain't, my arms are too short to fight with God. Amen. And the Lord is trying to, he said, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. But there are examples in the Bible where God pulled back the hedge on people and just let the devil do whatever he wanted to do but not kill him. I don't want to go through that with God. I want to stay in the blessed place. I'm going to say, I want to stay in the blessed place. Anybody want to stay in the blessed place? As long as the children of Israel stayed in Goshen, when they were in Egypt, all the plagues over there, they didn't come out of their house. Praise God. Are you willing? Y'all still willing to go? Are y'all sure you're willing to go? Come on, somebody clap your hands. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible declares, the last point I want to make is that in Luke chapter 3, the Bible says, amen, that Peter, amen, said, Lord, let us build three. Peter was so overtaken with his experience with God that he didn't know what to say. God must destroy your old and give you new perception of who he is, of who he is and who you are. Amen. Your perception is not working. Because how do I know it's not working? Because it's not working. Because you, praise the Lord, have not gone where God wants you to go. Where does God want me to go? God wants me to go to a place where he's 100% in charge of my life. 
And any time I try to take charge of my life, praise the God, and not give it over to the things of God, amen, praise the Lord, I have the wrong perception about who I am. What I'm telling God literally is that, God, I'm greater than you are. God, I, got, I know more about the situation than you do. Lord, I am the chief and you are, praise God, the Indian. But God said not so today. God is trying to help us today to let us know, praise the Lord, that when Peter said this, one aspect of what Peter said was that Peter saw God in a new way. And when Peter saw God in a new way, he said whatever. But we find out later on, God comes back around and corrects Peter. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please hear him. Praise God. See, God wants to get you to a place, hallelujah, where he can get you open, amen, to the change in your life, and then God can direct you in the way that you need to go. Amen. Jeremiah said in 42 chapter, amen, he said, Lord, show us the thing we must do, amen, and the way we must take. God is trying to help you, praise God, but you got to get to a place where God will experience, amen, and your experience with God will cause you to let go of your own ambitions in him and say, Lord, hallelujah, with men it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You get out the least glad somebody in the house of God today that understands that all things are possible. Wait a minute, I believe that all things are possible, but I got to have a change in my life. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. He was to destroy that old perception. And give you a new perception. He said, look what he said. And this is how it happens. He says, likewise, the spirit comes with our infirmities. Yes. For we know not what we should even pray. Amen. As we are. But the spirit itself makes an intercession with for us. With groanings that cannot even be uttered. God is letting us know today that this is not a natural thing. This is a spiritual thing. We found out when the, Jesus healed the blind man, amen, in John chapter 9, chapter 9, chapter 17, praise God. The man said, if, amen, they, the man was healed. He went to the church. The church folks didn't believe he was healed. They went and got his parents. They said, hallelujah, this man been blind from, amen, his birth. They said, ask him. He's like 40 years old, amen, when they didn't want to do When he said, when they didn't hear the answers they liked, they put him out. Stop telling God what you like and what you don't like. Amen. I don't like that, so I ain't going to do that. 95% of my life, I'm good. But that 5%, I got control of. The Bible says that one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. That little 5% of your life that you think you got control of will, will take out the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. I got to go the narrow way, church. Praise him. He says, amen, the spirit made him intercession for him. Now, let's get back to the scripture. The Bible said that the man, Jesus came and found the man. After Jesus healed the man, after the man got abused by people, too many people are letting the abuse of PQ keep you out of the church. Because people didn't treat you right. Because my boss didn't treat me right. Because my girlfriend or my husband or my wife didn't treat me right. I'm so glad that Jesus will still come and find me. Yeah. He's on your track right now, did you know? Or he wouldn't send a message like this if he didn't love you. He said with loving kindness and tender mercy, I'm going to reach out to you. Somebody to put their arms out right now and feel the loving mercy and the tenderness of God right now. Come on, reach out, reach out. We give ourselves a self-hug with the love of God. No matter where you are, he said, no, you are polluted in your own blood. I died for you. Praise God. I'm going to wash you out. He said, if any man is overtaken in a fall, ye with your spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of Jesus. He said, confess your fault one to another, and the very God will wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I'm so glad there's a plan for me to get back to God. He's going to come looking for you. Yes. And he said, if any man be a worshiper, yes. him, he heareth. Amen. Any man be a worshiper. Amen. That means, praise God, you're no longer telling God what you want to do, but you are open to what God has for me. Y'all still ready to go? Yes. 
Anybody still willing to go? Anybody still willing to go? He says, praise God, and, and search it. The heart knoweth what the mind is of the spirit, because he makes an intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. Lord, I need the spirit of God to stir up in my life. Church of the living God. If you know somebody who is not saved, and no one who has not been baptized in Jesus' name, you got to do this for them. The Bible says that we got to bear one another's burdens. You got people close to you who don't got the who don't have the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and guess what? One thing's going to happen. Life will happen. Amen. Just live long enough. Everybody knows life happens, don't they? Amen. Tragedy, trauma, distress, situations, circumstances are going to show up. And that's when you got to intercede for that person and let the Spirit make intercession for you and for them. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for another chance. Yes. God is trying to help us because your perception of what you think of yourself and what you think of God, God's trying to give you a new understanding. Amen. Think about what Peter, James, and John experienced after they came down off the mountain. This is a continuation. Their thought of who Jesus was had changed. 